Today is the anniversary of the birth of one of the stalwarts of Jamaica's political and national history, national hero, the right excellent Sir Alexander Bustamante. In less than 24 hours, Jamaicans will cast their ballots for members of parliament and ultimately the political party that will form the next government. As we reflect on both, today's magazine explores the life and work of Jamaica's first prime minister, examines the latest developments in electoral reform, and answers your questions about what happens after all ballots have been counted. Even more is on the agenda, so stick around. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thanks for joining us. Now make diseases spread. Wash your hands with soap and water instead. Wash them regular or use a hand sanitizer. Make sure the germs them dead. Touching your eyes or your mouth or your nose Wash your hands before you do things like those After you use the bathroom before preparing food Come on, wash your hands them clean This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya and dengue viruses Search for its breeding sites and destroy them A message from the Ministry of Health Good day, this is your GIS News for Wednesday, February 24. Jamaica is expected to pass the 11th IMF test, a review of the country's performance for the October to December 2015 period. The IMF team pushed back its visit until March due to the impending general elections, but based on Jamaica's assessment, the targets have been met. The primary balance at the end of December was $66 billion, $5.3 billion ahead of target. The net international reserves stood at 2.44 billion US dollars, 800 million US dollars more than target. In the meantime, co-chairman of the Economic Program Oversight Committee, Richard Baz, has attributed an increase in capital expenditure to a reduction of one particular IMF target. In essence, that is because the IMF reduction of the primary surplus from seven and a half to seven and a quarter has opened up some room for the expenditure, capital expenditure to um, hit the budget. So we're pleased to see that we are spending in that area. And tax revenues continue to exceed the target. At the end of December, tax revenues stood at $291.7 billion, $11.7 billion ahead of target. Tax on interest was up $4.5 billion, special consumption tax $2.4 billion, general consumption tax $1.5 billion, and company tax by $1.7 billion. Customs duty, telephone call tax, and tax on dividends were, however, behind the target. Meanwhile, inflation for January was minus 0.4%. And the major contributing components to that is electricity and fuel, which was down 1.4%, and vegetables and starchy food, which was down 3.4%, and really reflects the rebound of agriculture from last year's very severe drought. Land ownership is now a reality for more Westmoreland residents. 155 residents of Hertford Morris Lane were presented with their certificates of possession last Friday under the Sugar Company of Jamaica SCJ Holdings Community Regularization Program. It delivers certificates of possession to former sugar workers and their families who have been occupying former government-owned estates for many years. The ownership of a land title is an individual's opportunity to build prosperity for himself and his family. Land not only gives you access to a permanent place of residence, but can also open doors to entrepreneurship through agriculture and other cottage industries. Friday's presentation in Hertford Morris Lane brought to 455 the number of titles awarded in that area to date. The Community Regularization Program covers the parishes of St. Catherine, Clarendon, Westmoreland, St. Thomas and Trelawney. Meanwhile, SCJ Holdings Limited has completed the process of issuing 450 certificates of possession to residents of Clifton, St. Catherine. The distribution is part of the Community Regularization Program. 
SCJ Chairman Donna Scott Motley says it's a way of showing appreciation for sugar workers' contribution to the economic development of the country. I am extremely proud of this initiative of the SCJH to finally know that you have security of tenure. That is every Jamaican's dream. Students at some institutions will soon be able to learn driver education due to a partnership between the Education Ministry and General Insurance. Portfolio Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites disclosed the partnership last Friday. He was speaking at the opening of a $6 million cosmetology and performing arts building at Green Pond High School in Montego Bay. I would like to see a driver education program established at Green Pond in the next academic year. In the meantime, he has praised Green Pond for creating a skills-based facility that's giving students the tools to meet demands of the labor market. What you are achieving with your adjustment of curriculum, with your playing to the aptitudes of your students, is exactly consistent with the new philosophy of education in Jamaica. And finally, the National Works Agency, NWA, is carrying out a multi-million dollar drain cleaning exercise across four western parishes in support of government's Zika virus intervention. NWA will be clearing potential mosquito breeding sites and cleaning critical drains in St. James, Hanover, Westmoreland and Trelawney. Community Relations Officer at the NWA's Western Region, Janelle Ricketts, says approximately $24 million has been devoted to this effort, which is far advanced. Among the drains being targeted are the Catherine Hall drains and North Gully in St. James, the Solis Lane drain and Sandy Bay Gully in Hanover, and the Petersville and George's Plain drains in Westmoreland. The agency is also targeting areas such as Troy and Albert Town in Trelawney. This latest effort is part of an island-wide drain cleaning program. And that's it for GIS News Today. Amanda Chisholm, Jamaica Magazine, continues right after this break. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya, and dengue viruses. Protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health. On Monday, Election Day workers, the military and police cast their ballots for the 2016 general elections. Tomorrow, everyone else gets to make their mark. Before that, individual candidates and parties have been on the campaign trail, working hard to get your vote. Up next, we look at new rules to govern how they can solicit or receive the funds necessary to sustain those campaigns. fundamental principles of democracy, integrity, fairness, transparency, and respect for the sovereign will of the people have formed the basis of Jamaica's efforts towards electoral reform. The matter was first placed on the agenda for electoral reform as far back as November 2003. It being recognized that the existing provisions in the law, which are found in sections 55 through 61 of the Representation of the People Act, are deficient and do not provide an effective mechanism to re regulate the financing of elections. That changed between December 2015 and January 2016 as both Houses of Parliament approved amendments to the Representation of the People Act, reforming how political parties and candidates can access campaign financing. Among other things, the amended legislation establishes a National Election Campaign Fund to receive and make contributions to candidates and registered political parties. Contributions to the fund will be held at the Bank of Jamaica and can be invested to increase the pool of money. Contributions must be declared to the Electoral Commission of Jamaica within 14 days after they are made. Individuals, companies, other entities and Jamaican diaspora groups can all contribute, but there are donors from which registered political parties cannot knowingly accept contributions. Among them, foreign or Commonwealth governments or their agents and public bodies. Contributions are also not allowed from illegal entities, intermediaries or persons and entities whose identities are not disclosed or found to be false. Breaching the rules could result in a fine not exceeding $3 million or imprisonment for up to 12 months. 
to protect themselves, a registered political party or candidate in receipt of a contribution from an impermissible donor can return it within 30 days of receipt. Meanwhile, contributors can face a $1 million fine if they fail to declare whether they have entered into any government contract valued at over $500,000 two years before or after making the contribution. If the contract is entered into within two years after the contribution was made, then the declaration is to be made to the Commission within 14 days after the contract is entered into. Monies can only be disbursed from the National Election Campaign Fund when candidates have met all compliance requirements certified by the political ombudsman. Disbursement is done using a formula based on the amount of votes candidates received and there is a limit to how much each person can get. And that limit provides that the, um, that the, the, the disbursement to the candidate from the fund together with any other funding provided to the candidate shall not exceed 40% of the lesser of the total expenditure that the candidate is permitted to have incurred in the campaign period under Section 52BI and or the actual expenditure incurred by the candidate. For accounting and transparency, a registered political party or candidate must get an invoice showing the market value of goods and services received. Contributions are tax deductible. Management of the National Election Campaign Fund is the responsibility of the Director of Elections under the direction of the Electoral Commission. The fund is to be audited by a firm of auditors designated by the Commission and furthermore the Auditor General shall at all times have the right to audit the fund. The Electoral Commission has the power to serve disclosure notices and to request disclosures from contributors and registered recipients. Regulating political campaign financing, bolstering transparency and accountability of elected officials, increasing the ability of Jamaica's electoral system to deliver free and fair elections in accordance with the rules of law. When you're on the road, take your time. When you're on the road, bear this in mind. When you're on the road, you could save a life. When you're on the road. Sometime after tomorrow's votes, a new Prime Minister will be sworn in to lead the executive arm of government. But for now, we remember and salute the first person to hold that office on this, the anniversary of his birth. He was a commanding figure, a ruggedly handsome and a stylish gentleman who was very sure of himself. He was born William Alexander Clark in Blenheim, Hanover in 1884. At age 20, he did what was typical of many middle-class Jamaicans like himself, migrate to make a life abroad. For the next 30 years, his adventurous spirit took him to several countries, including Panama, the United States, and Cuba. And during his travels, he changed his name from William Alexander Clark to Alexander Bustamante. In Cuba, the seeds of what later became his lifelong passion were planted as he watched Cuban workers agitate for better working conditions. 1933, he was in Cuba. In fact, he left Cuba for Jamaica. And as you know, in Cuba, there were thousands of Jamaican workers in the Santiago Oriente um, region. And he would have seen the agitation in Cuba in 1933 as Cuban workers, in fact, were in rebellion in 1933. Upon his return home in 1934, at age 50, Bustamante set up his business in downtown Kingston. This brought him in daily contact with the war and misery of the Jamaican people. He goes into the money lending business, and who better to understand the condition the conditions that people suffer than someone who lends money. And this, I believe, must have 
um, developed in him the almost hobby of writing letters to the press commenting on the terrible conditions in existing in Jamaica in 1938. He bombarded the Gleaner, the island's main newspaper, with letters about the plight of Jamaican workers. These letters were regarded as hostile and earned him some unsavory labels such as pest, communist, and usurper. Around September 1937, Bustamante seemed to have taken the decision to be the voice of change for the Jamaican worker. He took his campaign to the street corners and homes all over the island. From Westmoreland to Kingston, Bustamante drummed up support, encouraging workers to protest for better working conditions. When the workers on the waterfront in May 1938 uh, went on strike, it's a complete spontaneous thing, said William Grant, an ex garveyite actually approached Buster I said, come and talk to these wharf workers. When he, when he went down to the wharf, the workers were a little bit unwilling to talk to him because Buster was a blonde man or near white. But Grant actually persuaded them to listen. And this is how he actually got a toehold into the labor movement in Jamaica. He was affectionately called Buster or Chief, the champion in the struggle for workers' rights. Those whom he represented stretched from the sugar fields in the West to the docks of Kingston and to the banana fields in the east. And Jamaicans embraced him wholeheartedly. He had a common touch. And uh, he was very much easy and at home in some back room of some shop, eating saltfish and crackers and whatever, you know, having a drink and t elbowing with the people and talking very much at home. Not that he, uh, I mean, he was always the boss, you know, I mean, Buster, I mean, he wouldn't suffer, you know, any foolishness. But he rubbed shoulders easily with people. And uh, you see, man, he was a street man, street corner man, too, you know, loved to talk on the street corners, quite at home. Buster's determination to represent the workers made him a thorn in the side of the colonial authorities. His now famous battle cry, shoot me but let my people go, made him a hero in the eyes of those he represented. The chief a come, the chief a come, the chief a come, was the son all over the land. But them wasn't looking for the Indian, it was a tall, handsome brown man. Anyway, the side there, was the name would have called from Froome, Search Island Estate, the waterfront, but it never matter to him at all, for the working class had no leader, and he was ready to leave. We take a break from election talk now to continue our weekly updates on the six strategic priorities informing how government is conducting its business. Today, it's all about the dedication to economic growth and job creation, exemplified by the assistance to one entrepreneur. We want to cut the cars of uh, buying chance from abroad. Build our mind, the young people's mind. Get them from universities, those that have nothing to do. Bring them into the fold. Teach them something new. Give them hope. It's a worthy goal that became reality through government intervention. Manufacturing is being resuscitated and getting a new lease on life. Three hundred thousand. That's the minimum number of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises known as MSMEs registered in Jamaica. Through various agencies and methods, the government is helping to develop these businesses into thriving, profitable enterprises. Recently, three public bodies combined tactics, finances, and business acumen to develop a concept into an entrepreneurial entity that is facilitating economic growth and job creation. Here is the Transformer story. I was forced to travel 
to various countries just to set up refurbishment, chance of my refurbishment. I said to myself, fantastic, but I, did, I don't do this in Jamaica. I need to do this home. Long story short, Granville Reed developed a proposal and submitted it to Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO. The promotions agency bought into the concept and came on board to help drive its birth. First step was to strengthen the business plan. A one revenue stream idea for manufacturing transformers was expanded to incorporate consulting and maintenance, as well as the development of trained technicians who can be sent to work in the sector overseas. Jampro then helped the transformer company source an investment of $35 million from the Exim Bank. Jamaica Bauxite Mining Limited also came on board to identify a site for the company and so approximately 45,000 square feet of the old bauxite plant in Lidford, St. Anne, became home to Federal Transformer. After almost two years of research and business development, Today, the company is in receipt of a three-year contract to exclusively supply Jamaica Public Service Transformer refurbishing, maintenance, and consulting services. In addition, the FTMC will be working with Wigton Wind Farm in Manchester, as well as major hotels that generate their own electricity. Already, the company has employed 23 persons and looks to increase to over 200 employees in three years. We can cut the cost of buying transformers abroad, building Jamaica. We don't have to depend on foreigners to come down and do it. In the last three years, we spent over 10 million, closer to 11 actually, US dollars on buying new transformers. So the, the impact um, is going to be so significant on JPS. It's, it's good for the country. It's good for the youth. As a society, we recognize the need to encourage investments. And when I read the business plan, I felt that this is something that Jamaica needed. A, it represents employment opportunities. B, more importantly, it represents transfer of technology. What we need is skills. We need tr technology transfer to, to, to build our young people. Giving birth to a project, a business project, is not easy anywhere in the world. It takes a lot of diligence, and that's why they have developed this word, due diligence. But that is why Jumper is here. That's why we do what we do, to help you along the way. I therefore want to go on record to inform the directors of Federal Transformer Manufacturing and Consulting Limited that now that you have opened shop in Jamaica, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce and its agency and other supporting agencies in government will continue to help you to make the most of your investment. The Andolan exercise must continue until not only you start to creep, but you start to run. If you have a business idea, big or small, give Jampro a call. They are on board to help you and help Jamaica achieve economic growth and job creation. We have been doing everything we can to ensure that adequate vector control efforts are carried out across the country. At the same time, we are ensuring that adequate supplies of pharmaceuticals are available free of cost at public health facilities. Additional financial and human resources have been provided to the Ministry of Health and other government entities so that they can be more effective in their actions. Let every Jamaican join hands and hearts to protect ourselves, our families, our neighbors, and our beloved nation.
Our half hour is almost up, but we didn't want to wrap up without looking at what happens once the people have spoken. What's the process for our governance system in the days and weeks following tomorrow's vote? On election day, winners are identified based on the first-past-the-post system under the Westminster system of governance. The candidate with the most electoral votes in a particular constituency will be named the Member of Parliament for that area and occupy a seat in the House of Representatives. There are 63 seats representing 63 constituencies in the House of Representatives or the lower house. A political party is declared the victor if its candidates secure the most seats. The party or parties with the remaining seats will form the opposition. The Governor-General, in his discretion, and those are the words in the Constitution, determines who commands a majority of the members of the lower house. That individual would then become the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is later sworn in and among the first order of business is to name a cabinet, that is, ministers with different portfolios in government. Some of these ministers will come from the pool of individuals who won their seats on election day, traditionally from the ruling party. Not less than two and no more than four of the ministers may sit in the Senate, also called the Upper House of Parliament. Unlike the House of Representatives, members of the Senate are not voted in or elected representatives. 13 of the 21 members are appointed by the Governor-General on the advice of the Prime Minister and the remaining eight by the Leader of the Opposition. That, in essence, is how the electoral process and governance system works in Jamaica. But it doesn't work without your participation. You have the right to vote. And if your name is on the voters list on February 25, go and vote for the candidate of your choice. The correct way to vote. Step one. Find out exactly where you are to vote before election day. Adrian Axe. Step two. Thank you very much. Present your voter's identification card and follow the instructions of the presiding officer. Step three. Once your identity has been verified and your name is found on the voters list, you will be issued a ballot paper. Step four. Go behind the voting booth and mark an X with the pencil provided beside the candidate of your choice. Then. Fold your ballot twice, leaving the flap out. Step 5. Give the ballot to the presiding officer. Then, dip your right index finger in the electoral ink and watch while your unopened ballot is put in the box. Step 6. Leave the vicinity in a peaceful manner. Your vote is your voice. Make, Make it count. count. This is where we close the pages on today's magazine. Thanks for your company. We have another program lined up for you tomorrow, so be sure to return. In the meantime, watch this one again on our website or YouTube channel. And if you have a comment, use our Twitter or email accounts. Until next time, I'm Andrea Chisholm. Have a wonderful evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.